Hello again, everyone. Uh, let me start by saying that I was actually impressed by the quality of several of your answers from last time. So, well done. You know who you are. And especially if you were among those who didn't do as much in class in normal conditions, but actually did a good job this time, even better. Now, let me close the curtain so that the sun cannot enter. <clears throat> And back to the 16th century. Today we're going to address another kind of exam question, another eight marker, this time on what was important about something in Elizabethan England. We have already tried to answer a similar question a few weeks ago, you might remember that, I hope you do, when we discussed Elizabethan theatre, what was important about Elizabethan theatre. But it's always good to revise exam techniques, so here we are. In particular, uh, today we will be looking at what was important about portraits okay, in Elizabethan England. To answer this question, you will need, one, the notes that have been published uh, this morning and that will be part of the classwork, the notes on Elizabethan England. Two, the video slash transcript you are watching slash reading at the moment, so you're probably already there, which incidentally also contains a couple of portraits which I will analyze later on. Three, some additional knowledge from the online resources that will be linked in the transcript. As we did last time, we are going to look at the following elements. What is the type of question? What are the elements needed for a good answer? What you should write in the answer? And finally, I will provide you with a model paragraph. Now, uh, Question topic and question type. Wrote topic in there. Now, this question asks you to explain what was important about a particular aspect of Elizabethan England. This means, in brief, uh, that you will need to discuss. Uh, I need to amend the transcript because I made some terrible typos. This means, in brief, that you need to discuss some key aspects, uh, the most important things of uh, of any given topic. For today, I decided to pick the topic of portraits, okay? The portraits of Elizabeth, because first, it's not impossible that it's going to be the question when you take the exam, because it's in the textbook and because it's a similar question on portraits has not been out for a while, so it might be. And also because it's something which we have already discussed, and it's always good to retrieve some information. What I would like you to do is uh, go to the notes on the Elizabethan period that I have uploaded and go to Lesson 4, Power and Politics, Court Patronage, court, patronage and Portraits, okay? Uh, there, uh, in the section on Portraits, you will find all or most of the essential information about the general situation, okay? Keep it open, you might need it later. Now, what are the elements of a good answer? Being uh, an AQA, uh, first of all, where do you find this kind of information? You will find it in the other invaluable piece of guidance that I have uploaded, the GCSC Revision Guide, which is also included in the classwork. You will be able to see that uh, this kind of question requires the following elements in order to be answered very successfully. Okay. First of all, being an AQA question, you will need two or more of something. In this case, the two or more things you will need to provide are aspects of importance, two, re two important things about portraits in Elizabethan, in Elizabethan England. Then you will need to show your factual and contextual knowledge, meaning uh, put the, your knowledge in the right historical context. We will see later on that... Uh, We'll discuss a portrait painted in 1585, and knowing what was going on in 1585 will make your answer look very good to an examiner, and also to me if you do that. And also factual knowledge, again, names, dates, and facts, as many as you can, and they should be connected to the questions. Be very specific if you can. Finally, second order knowledge. Second order concept, sorry, like chronology, which means putting things in the right context, causation and consequence, knowing why certain things, what caused certain things and what was the impact of those things. And finally, significance. There are also other second order concepts, 
If you don't know what a second order concept is, go to the GCSE revision guide. You will find all the information there. Okay. Otherwise, it will take me half an hour to explain them. Now, here comes the juiciest part of the video slash transcript. How should I write this answer and what should I put in it? First of all, we should identify the two or more aspects of importance that you will work with. As always, I will give you three aspects of importance, three things that you might write in your exam question, in your exam answer. Also remember that the knowledge you need can be found also in the notes that are uploaded and in the internet. So what do we what are the three points we will be we will be discussing? First of all, portraits are not realistic depictions of Elizabeth. Not what she looked like at all. Two, portraits were used to send a message. Okay, they were not just done because she liked people painting her. They sent a message. And what was this message? It was a message that benefited the Queen. It was a political message. Okay, it had uh, a name. Okay, now let's look at the first aspect, which is non-realistic. There is a good video from Horrible Histories, which we've watched on the last lesson, and uh, which you will find linked in the transcript, which tells exactly that. Portraits were not meant to be realistic depictions of Queen Elizabeth, okay, of what she actually looked like. Rather, they were meant to show how she wanted her subject to perceive her, how she wanted to be seen. Even if she was older, with wrinkles, pockmarks, yellow teeth, and a skin destroyed by lead-based Tudor beauty products. Yes, they put lead in, uh, in beauty products and that essentially made your skin fall off or something. Still, despite all of this, she always looks absolutely royal and perfect in those portraits. It's the same if you think about it with Instagram and Instagram filters today. Many people don't post on Instagram who they really are or how they really look, but how they want others to see them. Same thing. Which leads us to the next point. What kind of message did she want to send with those portraits? What I would like you to do now is uh, open the transcript, uh, if you haven't already, and scroll down until the part with the two portraits, okay? Because we're going to look them one by one. The fascinating thing, the thing that really draws me to, to medieval and Renaissance painting is that they are much more than figures, they're much more than simple pictures. Each detail in a medieval or Renaissance painting has a meaning, means something something that goes beyond its immediate aspect, its visual, immediate visual aspect. So, let's start with the Sieve portrait, painted in 1583, during a period in which she was absolutely desperate to reaffirm a rule against all the plots that kept popping out against her. Remember, we described quite a few number of plots. Now, uh, look at the Sieve portrait. The first element I think that strikes the viewer when looking at this portrait is the fact that the Queen is dressed in black and white. Okay? Those were the colors used since the Middle Ages okay, by monks and nuns, people who preserved the spiritual and physical purity in order to praise God. Here she's saying exactly that, I am pure like a nun, no man has touched me. Being the Virgin Queen it was a very appropriate message to give out was part of the public personality. Now, the symbolic meaning of those colors, it is, uh, is difficult for us to understand because we live 500 years from them, but it wasn't for them. You, di you didn't need to be a art historian back then to understand the meaning. It was clear and immediate. It's like uh, for us seeing uh, Prince William dressed as a soldier. It's clearly saying that he believes the military is important for the country. The other two elements of a person, uh, which are the pearl necklace and the sieve she has in her uh, left hand, were also symbols of purity. Okay, since ancient time, uh, the pearls were a symbol of purity, and the sieve, which separates what is good enough to pass from what is not good enough to get in, was meant to represent her alleged virginity. But there are other interesting elements in this portrait. Behind her, if you can see the green thing, there is a, there is a globe behind her. 
Sir Walter Riley had just started planning a colony in Virginia, called after the Virgin Queen, if you remember. And Elizabeth uh, could now sort of rightfully claim to hold dominion not only over England, but over North America too. Finally, the golden roundels, the golden circles in the column behind her, tell the story of Dido, this legendary uh, queen from the ancient city of Carthage. It's a very interesting story, look it up who became the symbol of strong, independent woman rulers. And this is, in fact, this is the message she actually wanted to give. I am beautiful and pure and like legendary, like a legendary queen, I rule alone over England and America. And we'll see in a moment how true that was. Now, uh, let's talk about the other portrait, the Ermine portrait, which was painted in uh, late 1585. As before, picture is in the transcript. Uh, the first thing that is the eye in here is how absolutely lavish and luxurious her dress looks, okay? Nothing like the modesty of the Sith portrait. This is luxurious and uh, full of gold and jewels. The message here is clear. And she wants to say, look, everything is going absolutely fine. The economy is not in shambles at all. Don't want to give you any spoilers, but yes, it was in 1585. And we'll see that it was terrible. The other thing uh, is the handle of the sword of justice, which is no ordinary sword. It was the sword of justice. It was and still is uh, one of the items of the crown jewels, a symbol of the queen's power and authority over the kingdom of England. She also has, even though it's, uh, it's not very visible because it's dark over dark, but she also has a branch of olive in her right hand, the one with the, with the ring, which is obviously a symbol of peace. Finally, the small creature that is uh, clinging to her left arm is an ermine, a kind of ferret, which is also another symbol of virginity and purity. She, being uh, posing as the Virgin Queen, she was clearly very attached to these sort of symbols. So, to sum these two portraits up, in the Sif portrait, black and white and everything, she wants to say, I am pure and clean, and I rule alone over the world, over the old world and the new, hence the globe, like the legendary Queen Dido. In the Ermin portrait, she wants to say, I am absolutely in control, the country is prosperous, and there is peace in the land. How true was that? Barely. Now, uh, those were political messages, okay? Those were like the ads you see of political parties during an election campaign. They want to show that the leader, in this case, Queen Elizabeth, is perfectly in control of the situation and everything is fine, or that if you vote her, everything is going absolutely fine. There is a table in the transcript, which I'm reading right now, and which summarizes the situation pretty well. So, for example, the idea of purity and virginity. In reality, she most likely had an affair with Sir Robert Dudley and uh, she had several favorites, but that's a private life. Peace and stability in the 1580s. What was going on in the 1580s? War with Spain, this undeclared war against Spain, privateering, raids, helping the Dutch revolt in the Netherlands. There was no peace, okay? Wealth, the idea that yes, the country is wealthy and prosperous. It was not. In the 1590s, the economy was not doing very well. And 1586 had one of the worst harvests in English history. Global rule. Uh, remember Sir Walter Riley and uh, have you ever heard of the city of Roanoke? You probably had because I mentioned that, but generally people don't hear about it because the colony uh, set up by Sir Walter Riley failed miserably. Everybody disappeared and... Uh, to this day, we don't know where they are. Finally, the idea that she was ruling alone is uh, not entirely true. While she was a strong ruler, she was more often than not in the hands of a council. Remember we discussed yesterday uh, how hesitant she was to sign the death warrant for a cousin Mary Queen of Scots. Eventually, it was one of her advisors who pushed her to sign it. Okay, she, the, the council had a lot of power over her. She was not ruling alone, taking all the decisions by herself. Now you'll think, oh, Elizabeth was a liar. This must be, this is terrible. Well, I must tell all of my friends that Elizabeth was a liar. Calm down. Now, this is not necessarily bad, okay? These portraits were meant to send a reassuring political message to the English people, especially in times of crisis. 
things are going down because your uh, your crops have did not give you enough food to survive the winter, don't worry, the queen is saying, we'll take care of this, the country is fine, look at how prosperous we are, everything is going to be fine. And eventually she was sort of right. Now that you've got all the information you need, here is a model paragraph. You will find that in the transcript as well. Now, starting the model paragraph. There are several important things about portraits in Elizabethan England. They sent messages, those messages were often political, and they did not reflect the truth. This is the introduction. For example, the sieve portrait shows Elizabeth dressed in black and white, with a pearl necklace and a sieve in her hands. Those are all symbols of purity, but we know that in reality she probably had an affair with Lord Dudley. There is also a globe behind her, symbolising her alleged control over the new world that would come with the colonies of Sir Walter Riley. This is to give the point that portraits send a message. On to the next paragraph. Uh, this is because uh, the portrait is not meant to tell the truth, but is made to send a reassuring message to the English people. The Queen is strong, independent and in control, like Queen Dido, which appears in the golden rounders behind her. This is the part saying that the message is political. Another portrait, the Ermine portrait, is also sending a reassuring message in a time of crisis. The winter between 1585 and 1586 had been terrible for the economy, as the harvest was the worst in English history. Furthermore, tensions with Spain were mounting and many nobles kept plotting to overthrow her. This is for the third point of, uh, uh, of importance. The truth is different. In those difficult time, times, uh, Elizabeth tried to reassure her subject by showing off her wealth, showing off the wealth of the country, symbolized by her wealthy dress, and by telling everyone that she was in control of the situation, as symbolized by the sword of justice. This, is, uh, this can be taken as another part of the paragraph that says uh, that uh, the portrait sent a message. Okay, so I've given you the information, I've given you uh, a model answer, now it's up to you. Watch the, read the transcript, look at the, look at the portraits, look at the online resources, resources and answer this question. Explain what was important about portraits in Elizabethan England. Good luck.